When you want to train a neural network in PyTorch, you use commands such as model.train, model.eval. You use commands like tensor.cpu.detach.numpy. What do all of these commands do? What's the difference between a tensor and a numpy array? What's the difference between a CUDA tensor and a CPU tensor? In this video, we're going to cover this before we jump into training our artificial neural network. Stay with us. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Done. In the previous video, we talked about our CNN model and we designed the class for our CNN model using PyTorch, right? So before we jump into training and evaluating the, these models, I just have to make sure that you are absolutely comfortable with some of the key commands that we'll be using. And to my surprise, many people have big misunderstandings about these commands. So if we just finalize our knowledge, like get comfortable with these commands, for the rest of uh, this bootcamp, we'll be really comfortable, okay? So let's just get started. Number one is called model.eval, right? So you will see me using this many, many times. So model is basically your neural network. And sometimes we, we actually uh, use the command .eval, like it has a functionality on, under, underneath um, in its class that, that's called eval. Now, what does it do? Remember, when you train a neural network in PyTorch, what happens is that there is this thing called a computational graph that keeps track of your forward pass and backward, uh, backward pass processes, meaning that it will compute the gradients after every operation that happens in your network, every sigmoid you have, every multiplication, every summation, everything that happens in your, in your uh, neural network, everything that happens to your input data, all of those operations, the computational graph keeps track of the gradients. And these gradients are then used using backpropagation and chain rule so that um, the weights of your neural network could actually be trained, okay? Now, during training, that we can use certain uh, functionalities. For example, you, we, you could use dropout, which means that during your forward pass, you turn off and on, basically turn on and off, on and off, some of the neurons randomly during your forward pass, right? And you can also do things like batch norm, meaning that um, you normalize the activations uh, of a particular layer so that after these activations are fed as inputs to the next layer, they will be well behaved, they will be centered. Um, so both of these operations are used during training an artificial neural network. So when you want to evaluate or basically test your artificial neural network, say you have trained your model and now you want to test it, what happens is you use model.eval for a very specific reason. You do not want dropout and batch norm to treat your data the same way as if you are training your artificial neural network. What do I mean by that? First of all, it will turn off dropout, meaning that all of the neurons will be alive all the way during testing, uh, during testing your neural network, okay? That's not a part of your testing process. Dropout is only used during training, that particular dropout, okay? Number two, it makes sure that your batch norm will behave with respect to the statistics of the entire training data that it has learned throughout the training process. You see, batch norm, in general, what it does is, I don't want to get into the details of it, but when you divide your input data into mini batches, your batch norm layer computes the mean and the standard deviation of a particular mini batch of your data, right? Um, <clears throat> when you want to test your, uh, basically test your artificial neural network, this shouldn't happen. It shouldn't keep track of the mean and standard deviation of the mini batches in your test data, no but it has to use the mean and standard deviation that it has learned across the entire training set. In order to make sure that dropout and batch norm would behave according 
to the testing process that, that you want to undergo, you have to make sure that you run this command model.eval, right? So no dropout will happen. Second, your batch norm layers are not going to keep track of the mean and standard deviation of your mini batches in your test set. They're going to use the mean and standard deviations that they've learned throughout the training process. Okay. Number two, the second command is model.train. Now, when you do this, it brings uh, operations like dropout and batch norm back to a training regime. Uh, now, here is the big misunderstanding. When you use model.eval, it does not turn off gradient computing. That's so important to know. It does nothing to do with the computation of your, uh, your, your gradients. Okay, That's very important to know. It doesn't turn it off. All it does is what I, what I told you. Now, there are other ways to turn off the computation of gradients during testing your model. And it's not model.eval, okay? So that's lesson number one to take away from this. The other thing is we'll be talking a lot about tensors. And so far we've been mostly work, uh, working with NumPy arrays, right? So what's the difference between a NumPy array and a tensor? Um, so the, the difference between a NumPy array and a tensor is that the tensors are backed by the accelerator memory like GPU and they are immutable. You can never change the value of a tensor. When you change its value, you're not changing the value of the original tensor, but you're changing the value of a copy of that tensor. Now, unlike NumPy arrays, uh, you can actually use uh, tensors, basically process them using your GPU. Okay? You can never update a tensor, but, but, but you have to create a new one, as I said. If you are into machine learning or going to be into it, a tensor is a suitable choice if you are going to use GPU. A tensor can reside in accelerator's memory. Okay. Now, these are the key points that, I, that I'd like you to take away from this. First of all, PyTorch tensors are similar to NumPy arrays, but can also be operated on CUDA-capable NVIDIA GPUs, for example. Okay, That's very important. Second, NumPy arrays are mainly used in typical machine learning algorithms. So you, you can use a NumPy arrays for, you know, to, to in, 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 so you can use NumPy arrays for uh, k-means algorithm or decision trees in the scikit-learn package. Whereas PyTorch sensors are mainly used in deep learning, which requires heavy matrix um, manipulation and computation. Okay. Last but not least, unlike NumPy arrays, while creating your PyTorch tensor, take special notice about this one, okay? It also accepts two other arguments called the device type and the requires grad um, parameter. Device type says whether the computation happens on your CPU or your GPU, meaning that is this a GPU tensor or a CPU tensor? And requires grad is when you want to compute gradients for this particular tensor and the operations that it's actually involved with. So that is also very key, a very important factor. The other thing is when you use a CPU tensor or a CUDA tensor, any operation between the two, summation, multiplication, whatever have you, is not going to happen because they're backed up by different hardware. One is running using CPU, the other one is, is running using your GPU, right? So you have to make sure that your tensors reside on the same hardware. Either they're, they're both, for example, like they're both in a summation operation, for example, are residing on your CPU or on your CUDA or basically on your GPU. Right. So this here is a simple example of what I'm talking about. So let's define your device. You can actually define a device using torch.device command. So meaning that if I have a GPU, so if torch.cuda is available returns true, meaning that meaning that I have a GPU on my system, then my device equals CUDA. It's literally a string, says CUDA. Else, if I don't have any GPUs on my system, my device will become CPU. I might as well you know, replace all of this with a string say, saying CUDA because I know I have a GPU, right? But this is a better way of programming it so that you could run your code everywhere. The other one is, the other command is 
I'm defining a I'm defining a tensor, but it's a CPU tensor, um, and I'm putting the the number ten in it. This is a CPU tensor. Now here I'm putting my CPU tensor, whatever that value is, onto my device, which is a GPU. So the, using the dot two command, you can actually put your tensor on either GPU or CPU. So here I'm putting it on my device and putting the result into this new variable called a GPU tensor. So at this stage, CPU tensor resides on my CPU and the GPU tensor resides on my GPU. Now, I'm gonna print out their values, their type, and at the end, I wanna print out the multiplication of the two. It's literally multiplying these two random numbers, these two random tensors together. Now, when I run this, you notice that I can actually see the CPU tensor, like I have 10, 10 values. Sorry, actually torch.rand is an array of a tensor of 10 values, my bad. It's not just a scalar. So CPU tensor has 10 values in it and the type is torch float tensor. In other words, it's a CPU tensor. But the other one, the second print command returns the same values, but it is a torch CUDA dot float tensor, meaning that this is a GPU tensor. Now, when you want to multiply these two together, you get an error that says, expect the type torch dot float tensor, but got torch dot CUDA float tensor, meaning that this guy is a CPU tensor and it is actually torch dot float tensor, right? And when I wanted to multiply that by this second guy, I was expecting something of the same sort, but I received torch.cuda.flow tensor. I cannot multiply these two together. They reside on different hardware. Now, if I were to actually put my CPU tensor on the device, meaning, remember, device at the moment is GPU. Sorry, I mean CUDA, technically speaking, because... Um, because of this command, right? Now, if I were to also put that on my, my, my GPU, and if I were to run this, no error, right? Both of them become CUDA flow tensors. So, lesson to be learned. Make sure all of your data and models and everything are on the same type of hardware, either on GPU or on CPU. If Otherwise, they cannot, uh, you know, communicate with one another. You cannot do any operations between them. Um, as so the the, the actually uh, yeah yeah here so in which scenario are we going to use torch.cuda that tensor when so when you want to use gpu acceleration that is when you use this this type of tensor cuda tensors okay and if you are uh, curious as to what what cuda is uh, cuda is actually here is a very nice you know simple explanation CUDA is a parallel computing platform and application programming interface that allows software to use certain types of graphics processing unit for general purpose processing. So, uh, in other words, you can use your, your graphical processing unit, which is technically used for, you know, usually games. You can actually use it to train your deep neural networks it's using CUDA. Okay, that's good. And the last bit that I'd like to explain here is that later on you'll see me doing things like tensor.cpu.detach.numpy. And what the heck is happening here? So what it does is, you know, when you have a tensor, as I said, when you define a tensor, we have this other argument next to it that says requires grad. Now, when it's true or, or false, either way, a tensor has this sort of secondary structure next to it that is responsible for holding the gradients with respect to that tensor, okay? But the NumPy array doesn't have this. So in other words, if I want to convert a CUDA tensor to a NumPy array so that I could, do, I could use NumPy operations on it, I can't just simply do it. I can't just, you know, say NumPy equals that. First of all, I have to make sure that that secondary part of the tensor I'm, I'm, I've gotten rid of. I don't, it's because NumPy already doesn't have a secondary structure for, for holding gradients, right? So 
And the other thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that I'll make a copy of this GPU tensor on my CPU so that NumPy could actually work with it. NumPy is not going to be able to uh, use the GPU tensors, right? So here is what we're doing. So first of all, we are making a copy of our GPU tensor on the CPU. And then we detach. What happens is you, you are detaching this tensor from the computational graph. And only then can you convert it into a NumPy array. You'll, you'll see me using these, these commands a lot in the next few videos, okay? So here are the main things we talked about. Model.eval, model.train, the difference between a tensor and a NumPy array, the difference between a CPU tensor and a CUDA tensor, and finally we talked about uh, the tensor.cpu.detach.numpy. We'll be working with all of these a lot later on. If so, you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and also leave comments down below so that I'll know what you guys think about. Also, make sure you click on that bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So, until then, on behalf of Emel Dan, take care.